Hello, my name is Wouter van Eck. I'm a food forest farmer and also the chairperson of the Food Forest Foundation based in the Netherlands. I will share a presentation and will concentrate upon can we feed the world with food forest? And well, it's an interesting topic. Uh, so I hope you can will enjoy. And afterwards, this question and answering time for 15 minutes. At this slide, you already see a glance of our food forest uh, as the picture was taken uh, last autumn. But uh, let's start with the beginning. In 2009, this was just a bare field where Peter Janssen and me together plan planned and planted a food forest system in the Netherlands. We are located quite close to the border with Germany, so it's cool temperate climate. Sometimes a winter can be as cold as minus 20 degrees. And sadly enough, two summers ago, we reached already for the first time ever the 40 degrees. So it's a climate crisis is arriving in our area as well. But this is our food forest at a, a few years ago in an aerial picture. And I want you also to take a look at the surrounding since you can see the meadows, the very green meadows and only growing just one crop over there. So our food forest, it's already a species richness of 600 different plants. Many of them offer us something edible. This is a glance of the harvest in a September period, which is of course a rich period in our climate with abundance of fruits and nuts and even some herbal flowers still. And I forgot most of the green uh, perennial vegetables to add to this uh, picture. What we learned during those years of growing a food forest system is that there is much more edible and to grow in our own landscape than we had imagined, imagined before. So it's a growing abundance and new taste uh, to our own diet and to our customers. We deliver and cooperate with a restaurant in a nearby town. And the chief cook is coming every Monday and we harvest together. We also uh, deliver to a brewery of craft beers, quite tasty ones actually. And we deliver to an organic grocery shop. So we, we grow a lot of different uh, fruits, nuts, edible leaves, shoots, flowers in our food forest. And many, many people wanted to bring a visit. And uh, most of the times they leave more happy than they came, which is joy to see. And people are really, really very enthusiastic that it is possible to bring back biodiversity because our agricultural landscape nowadays is an empty landscape. In industrial agriculture, 70% of the insects disappeared. Uh, hundred thousands of birds left our country and are not here anymore. But in the food forest, it's full of life. It's a lot of insects, it's a lot of birds and pollination going on and plague control as well. So people are happy that it's possible to combine a food forest system, produce food, and returning of biodiversity. But then quite often this question pops up. Can you feed the world this way? And of course, this is a very interesting question because the population of the world should be fed well. But to ask this question to a food forest farmer is maybe addressing the wrong farmer since at the moment, we already have a, a food system which is not feeding the population well. Over 800 million people are suffering from hunger and malnutrition. 
and over 2 billion people are having obesitas and even more people are having other together with the obesitas ones welfare diseases related to their diet so there's something going wrong with feeding the population right now and ending hunger must have something to do with ending poverty and a more just and equal distribution this a food forest farmer cannot solve this is uh, demanding other actions but the food forest farmer may help to create sustainable agriculture an agriculture fit for the future since industrial agriculture nowadays is using a lot of fossil fuels is decreasing biodiversity is harming soil life causing erosion and this cannot go on so production levels already are under pressure due to climate crisis due to uh, damaged soils and food forests can help but what diet should we eat scientists during the 50s you can see at the left of this slide well they did offer people some choice but you were asked to eat meat and dairy every day and at the right it's a more modern version of the healthy diet advice you see well plants have to play a key role in a healthy diet they offer vitamins they offer fibers they offer uh, bioactive compounds and you also need proteins and those can come from nuts or dairy and meat and you need uh, a lot of other fibers to together with the carbon hydrates uh, at the right bottom of the plate of from canada and uh, the other thing you need are the unsaturated fatty acids and those are uh, very well in the nuts again so you might recognize the plate at the right is easily transferable to a food forest plate like this one from our food forest harvest in October. There are those different fruits, there are different nuts, there are leafy vegetables, perennial ones, and the sweet chestnuts offer us, us carbon hydrates as well. Everything we need to eat is in this plate. But I have to admit, it's not our uh, conventional dish, how the Dutch people and the, most people in European eat nowadays, with too much meat, uh, too much uh, carbon hydrates from uh, annual crops. Uh, it's a different way of cooking. This we nicknamed botanical gastronomy. So it's possible uh, to have a tasty diet with using plants much more than we are used to do. For instance, uh, and this is very important, the chief cook is using sweet chestnuts already, which is the trees that our uh, food for us are still not that big, but I give us some uh, buckets of nuts already, but the chief cook, uh, Emil van der Staak, is use, using and developing recipes based upon sweet chestnuts because it's a wonderful tree for the future because it's fixing carbon, uh, it's growing without needing any fertilization and offering us carbon hydrates. And his recipes are delicious. And some of them uh, are like sweet chestnut tempeh, other like sweet chestnut chocolate. Uh, without chocolate, it tastes wonderful. So botanical gastronomy is a tool to have all those new plants and those underutilized plants on our plates to have a healthy diet and to have a tasty diet. Those two should be combined. And this is a, a, a core finding of the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, well known, uh, and they emphasis the agricultural system nowadays is suffering from the very same climate change they are causing. So this is a real 
appeal to change the way we farm and the way we eat. This way of thinking popped up in my mind for some years ago already because, well, you did see the almost romantic pictures of our food forest with the exaggerated abundance, the many, many different species. But imagine it's only two and a half hectare. And Peter and me both know very well where almost every plant is growing. And if we have to harvest a certain plant, even something like the black currant, we know where that species is growing. And if I should explain to someone else, well, you have to pass the metler and before the Chinese dog would turn left uh, and next to the hazel, you are too far, uh, watch out, there is uh, ramsons growing over there and then you can pick one black currant shrub. This is not a way to increase harvest accessible in a large scale farming method. So we more or less compromised with ourselves. A food forest needs to be a polyculture. It needs to be a perennial system. It's using the layering of a natural forest. It's mimicking a natural forest. It's a, there is a key role for the soil food web. But having said this, with all these in your designing system, you can design a more rational system, like on the design you're looking at right now. This still is a, a polyculture. It has the different layers. It is perennial cropping system. But the trees, the shrubs, the herbaceous plants, they all are planted in rows. And therefore, harvesting, it's much more easy to do. And farmers can scale up production and deliver to the food chain, which many consumers will still use the coming decades. Supermarkets, restaurants, they need bigger production and easier uh, harvesting methods to get to shift to the perennial food forest system as source of their food. So this is possible with this system. And I'm very, very thankful to Jan Boulestro, uh, a friend from France who studied in Wageningen and did the designing together with me and did the calculations of this system. And this is a graph he came up with. The 16 species in this designed food forest system after a slow start, as every food forest system is starting slowly, it's increase in production, you can see. The red line is pointing out how much energy the kilocalories are produced within this system. And the blue line is also the proteins and the fats included persons need for having a healthy diet. And still not the vitamins, the fibers, but I'm quite confident we have some to offer to uh, the consumers. This clarifies that after the slow start and then the increase of productivity in about 10 years, it's possible to have uh, produce enough healthy food to feed six people per hectare on a yearly basis. Of course, they are not forced to live on the hectare and they are also allowed to eat other food from other hectares and other farms. But this is the calculation to clarify how much persons can be fed with this system per hectare. And actually, this is above the level that industrial agriculture is realizing nowadays. So this is uh, the good news. We can feed the world even better that industri industrial agriculture is doing nowadays. To, we have made a nickname for the uh, 
designing method with the food forest system planted in rows. We nicknamed it the rational food forest because the other type of food forest or forest gardens like Martin Crawford's forest garden in Totnes, uh, like our own food forest, Ketelbrook, those are romantic landscapes. It's, it's a pleasure to be there. It's beautiful. It's extremely diverse, but not that easy picking if you don't know the way what to pick and if you want to pick volumes. But in the rational food forest, it's more easy. And our foundation, Stichting Voedsel Bosbouw Nederland, started a project in cooperation with the province in the south of the Netherlands to make a pilot project based upon this farming method, the rational food forest. It's 20 hectares big, and you see a sketch at the left. Part of the sketch are the hedges, the dark green lines, which are making new plots within the empty area of the Dutch agricultural landscape. And the hedges have a key role for biodiversity, for offering nectar and pollen from late in winter, like the cornelian uh, cherry flowering end of January and uh, the, the black hawthorn and, uh, and so on and so on till even late in summer and autumn, offering pollen and nectar for insects. We need them for pollination, offering place to nest and hide and eat for birds. We need them for play control and partly their habitat, their place to live will be in those hedges. The hedges also are important for shelter from strong winds and also are important, some of them for uh, uh, nitrogen uh, fixation uh, to feed other plants which are not able to uh, fixate nit nitrogen. So this is a sketch. And if you zoom to one of those hectares, one at the left, you can see from above, it's very strict planting, but this is a polyculture, not that much different from in species richness as a natural forest would be in our surroundings. And at the right, you see another spot where a young farmer decided to implement such a food forest system on the meadows with the monoculture ryegrass. So this farm is shifting well, it passes to a new generation from dairy production only to food forest production. And our foundation is encouraging farmers to take these steps. And currently we have in different plots, different spots in the Netherlands, around 150 hectare in progress, with planting the hedges, making the design together, fitting for those farmers who go another way. Of course, they are not forced to change to food forest overnight with all of their area. If it's five hectares, uh, at minimum, we can and will help them to implement uh, this food forest system. And this is a cross section made by Evelyn Derrickson of our foundation uh, to clarify that. After some time, the planted rows together, well, actually they look quite romantic. This is like a park or like a diverse forest. And most plantation forests in our country are much more dull and less species rich than such a food forest system as we are developing and planting right now together with the farmers. You can see there's a person uh, walking through uh, to, to clarify the size. And uh, she might be around one meter, uh, 80, 80 centimeters, which is an effort height in our country. And yeah, the bigger trees grow eventually as big as they should be in a major forest. So 
feeding the world with food forest. Well, still I do not propagate all farmers should change to food forest, but we do have a farming method. If we rationalize the design and we can really increase production and help to reach this goal. The Eat Lancet Commission on Healthy Diets. Uh, it's a very interesting project. And although the clock is ticking and climate crisis is here and soils are degrading and biodiversity is disappearing, those processes can be stopped and changed. And the good news is, if we choose for a healthy diet, mostly plant-based, using much more species than we used to do, many of them being perennial, and there are many, many underutilized plants around for every climate. If we change to such a plant-based diet, it's good for our own health and also the best thing to do for the health of the planet. Right? with avoiding climate crisis. So we look back another aerial picture of our food forest. And well, this was the summer the climate crisis arrived in the Dutch agricultural landscape. Those meadows, which should be green in the growing, during the growing season, turned brown because of the hot temperature and the shortage of water and even the strong winds drying up the grasses. And the food forest, as you might see, still is lush, green, and was producing more than the year before, since food forest production is increasing year after year after the slow start. There are three other green fields around, one north of our food forest, this is corn meant for fodder, which is a bit more drought resistant, so it turned not uh, brown, but it did not offer that much uh, harvest to the farmer. Then to the left at the bottom, you see a monoculture field uh, with potatoes, and potatoes in monoculture in the Netherlands, they are sprayed awfully often, so you see the tracks with the machines running two, three times a week, uh, spraying pesticides. But when the summer became that hot and dry, as never before, the farmers started irrigating. So using fossil fuel to pump up water 24 hours a day, seven hours a week, actually fighting the consequences of climate crisis by burning fossil fuel, which is not exactly the, the most clever thing to do, in my opinion. And then up north, uh, very close to our small village, you see another green field. This is belonging to the local soccer club. And this one is from plastic. So it's another way to have a green landscape during the era of climate crisis, crisis but that's not the most far favorable one, in my opinion. So the food forest did succeed even in these, during the, these extreme summers we have had lately. And now again, this question, can you feed the world? It's asked to us, but it should be asked to the other ones, which are failing to produce during these cir circumstances and which are depending upon huge external inputs, fossil fuels, fodder, uh, pesticides, everything from outside needed to have their farming method and actually not growing that much food, but mainly fodder in the Dutch landscape and not climate resilience enough to stand such uh, dry and hot summers as the food forest did survive and even uh, neglected with growing and producing well. As you might see, uh, these plums are from the very same moment and they were uh, juicy and delicious. And they ended up in the restaurant and uh, even in the, those uh, good tasting craft beers. 
And then the other thing, the last thing to, uh, to elaborate on is about another question we get quite often. Since we produce food and deliver to a restaurant, brewery, and grocery store, but we do not do any fertilization. Of course, no artificial fertilization is going on, but also no organic manure or compost is being brought to our food forest. And this also is sometimes driving people crazy. They, after 7,000 years of growing annual crops, it's in our system that we should take care for the plants, which is true if you grow annual vegetables, which is true if you have annual crops on your beer field, but which is not true if you grow a food forest, since the forest system is cooperating between plants and soil food web to increase fertility. For instance, keep in mind, plants, perennial plants, mostly do eat air. They soak up carbon dioxide, which is a good idea. They need and take up water, which is arriving via the air, direct or indirect via rain and water table. They also used fixed nitrogen, which is coming via the bacteria cooperating with some of the plants, but it's originating from the air. And then the root system of trees and shrubs is exudating, giving carbon hydrates to soil life. And in exchange, they will get back some tiny micronutrients which fungi and bacteria do find in soil, sometimes even fixed phosphorus, which plant roots cannot harbor and take up, but the certain fungi can, and in exchange for those sugars out of the photosynthesis process, they will deliver, deliver to the tree or shrub involved. So please keep in mind, trees do eat a lot of air and they need very little micronutrients. They give more to soil than they take out and soil life is helping them to get some materials out of bedrock out of sand, out of pebbles, out of the inorganic. And the system together is making the inorganic organic. That's why a growing forest is increasing biomass and is increasing soil diversity, uh, soil fertility. And therefore, it's not needed to use external fertilization. It's even demixing these processes. This is uh, one of my last slides, and this paper is done by another brilliant student from Wageningen University, because Nick Peoples researched how much phosphorus is go leaving an area if you harvest 2,000 kilo of chestnuts per hectare, and how much phosphorus will be added by certain natural processes via soil food web, for instance, we know about nowadays. And then if you just look at the above two meters of your soil, how much will be there in the agonic and agonic material, so not accessible for plant roots because it's fixed, but accessible for bacteria and fungi and how long it will take to lose only half of the phosphorus being available. And uh, this really is in thousands of years, as you can see at the bottom, which is amazing. And since at the moment, industrial, uh, industrial agriculture is running out of phosphorus, it's using it in artificial fertilizer. And actually, artificial fertilizer is not man-made, but is using phosphorus from mining, like in China and in occupied Western Sahara. For and this is ending, and this will be end in a few decades. And 
still industrial agriculture is depending upon external input, which is ending because if you add phosphorus to your crops, being a farmer, most of it, well, most of it should be taken up by the crop itself. But part of it is spawned. Some of it leaches to uh, water system, which is not good for the quality of the water system. And some of it will be fixed forever with iron or calcium. Iron phosphorus is a fixed uh, combination, which is not accessible for plant roots anymore. But it is accessible for funky, who can in exchange with pl perennial plants mine this out of the soil. So there's one farming system in a dead end trap, and the other farming system called food forest is gaining phosphorus out of the soil and bringing it back into the organic system. So a brief overview of the different types of land use. At the right, you see the uh, modern monoculture agricultural uh, systems being annual cropping systems dominant or livestock being dominant. And they, these systems decreased biodiversity are causing emissions of greenhouse gases, are depending upon external inputs heavily and are not climate proof, are not resilient against the extremes happening. Then in the mid, there are three types of agroforestry, all being agriculture. You can have trees in a row in, a, uh, in an annual cropping system, the alley cropping system. You can have silver pasture. It's grazing animals below trees. Or you can have the food forest system, which is using the different layers of a natural forest and is using and promoting soil food web to do the beneficial things for us. So the increase in biodiversity, it's, well, every tree counts. So I'm in favor of every tree returning into the landscape. And within the traditional agroforestry systems like silver pasture and alley cropping, there is more biodiversity than in the monoculture cropping systems. But in the food forest, and this is really the, the noise we hear in our own food forest, there are that many insects, that many uh, birds, and that many uh, mammals returning, that it really is at the same level as a natural forest. There has been research done, and it's amazing findings. Uh, of course, carbon sequestration is best if you have more uh, chlorophyll, more green leaves, more perennial crops, and more untouched, untouched soil. And uh, so external inputs, which is a heavy burden for every farmer because they have to pay for it, which is a heavy burning burden for our planet as well, are uh, much less in the food forest system. And then the food forest system, yeah, it's not that I advocate to be in climate crisis, but when the climate crisis is there, it will survive more of the extremes as the other, other agricultural systems. And at the left, you see the plantation forest, often only one species, one age. In our country, there is misunderstanding and since it's a plantation forest is of, often called nature, but it's not nature, it's a plantation forest. Another monoculture cropping system, not as bad as the annual cropping systems, of course, but not as good as a food forest system. I thank you all for the attention, I hope, you uh, did understand my uh, ideas for how food forests can contribute to feeding the world in the future. Uh, and I'm looking forward for your reactions and uh, see or hope to hear from you quite soon.